many volunteers for A? I volunteer. I volunteer. Claudia. Claudia. Okay. You got to put your name in there else we can't see you. All right. So how did you do question A? Okay. So I just um, multiplied uh, 6 times X. So I got 6X minus, and then I multiplied 6 times 3, which is 18. So 6X minus 18. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So you got 6X minus 18. Uh, because you distributed the 6 to the x and you distributed the 6 to the negative 3. Okay. Um, do I have a new volunteer as tribute for question B? Uh, I, I volunteer as tribute. Quinn? Quinn. Yes, Quinn. Okay, for B, um, I did um, 3. So I did 3a and I did it to everything in the parentheses. So I multiplied it to a and that would be 3a squared or to the power of 2. All right. And did it to 6, which would be 18a. Excellent. And I'm, I'm really glad that you recognize that you can multiply terms together even when their variables are not the same. So that's excellent work. Are we able to put a squareds together with a? Can we, can we combine these two variables together? I heard somebody say no. Okay, why not? I agree with you. I agree with you. No is the right answer. But why can we not combine these two? Because this is A and this is A. Not the same value. What do you mean by not the same value? What what part of, of the A's tells us that I cannot combine this term with this term? The squared term. Okay, because this one is squared and this one is not. And the variable and the exponent have to be identical for us to combine them and to call them similar. Okay. Great job. So with that in mind, I would like you to take 30 seconds and multiply everything out in question C. So 30 seconds. Ten more seconds. All right. So do we? So do we have a volunteers tribute for this first part right here? Allie, I think I heard Allie. All right. So Allie, go for it. Um. So I started by distributing the three a. I got three a squared and plus eighteen a. Oh, and that turned out to be the same as that first for a problem B, right? Okay. And then, um, I did distributed the 4 and I got 4a plus 24. Okay. Oh, I forgot to write the a here. I am very sorry about that. All right, so you, 4a times a, you said was 4a, and 4 times 6 is 24. Okay. I simplified the 2, 18a, oh, yeah. and 4a by adding them together and getting 22a. Okay, because 4a and 18a are common terms, so we can add those together. So we still had the 3a squared, and then you combine the two common terms to get 22a, and that should have been plus. And then we had our plus 24. All right, 
Um, excellent job. So, so really, now we're looking at combining some of those things we've done in separate algebra sheets into one problem. We're multiplying a monomial times other monomials, and we're combining the similar terms once we're done. Excellent. All right, so let's take a look at this last problem. So now we have a binomial, 3a plus 4, times the binomial a plus 6. So what that means is we are going to be multiplying 3a times everything in the other binomial. We're also going to be multiplying 4 times everything in the other binomial as well. So what do we get when we get 3a times a? 3a squared. 3a squared. What about 3a times 6? 18a. Oh, it's the same thing as b, isn't it? Okay. What about 4 times a? 4a. 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 What about 4 times 6? 24. 24. It's the same as the last one. It is exactly the same as this last one. You're absolutely right. So these two expressions are equivalent. Now if you think back to uh, seventh grade, I, I know it's your favorite grade ever, do you remember accentuate the negative and you dealt with the distributive property? Yes. And yes. It, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense quite frankly because you're using the distributive property when you have just plain old numbers inside the parentheses, and it seemed kind of silly. Well, moving forward, starting now, you're almost always going to have a variable in there as well. And so the only way to get through this, or, or to simplify these problems, is by using the distributive property. So the distributive property, in terms of level of importance from 1 to 10, 10 being high, 1 being not very important, I would give the distributive property roughly an 11 in terms of level of importance. And you're going to be doing problems like this and using the distributive property hundreds of times before the end of 2020. It's something that's going to be coming up over and over again. All right, are there questions? So today we're going to be looking at growth factor. And we're going to be trying to figure out how does the growth factor we find in these problems today differ from the growth factors we've had in the past. And also, how, how are they the same? And so we are going to be talking about everyone's favorite topics, reproducing rabbits. That's right. I didn't make this one up. Sorry. In 1859, English settlers introduced a small number of rabbits to Australia. The rabbits had no natural predators in Australia, so they reproduced rapidly and ate grasses intended for sheep and cattle. Did you know that in the mid-1990s, there were more than 300 million rabbits in Australia? The damage they caused, Australian agriculture, was roughly $600 million per year. That, that's right, that is $2 million per rabbit. In 1995, a deadly rabbit disease was deliberately spread, reducing the rabbit population by about half. However, because the rabbits are developing immunity to the disease, the effects of this measure might not last. Suppose biologists had counted the rabbits in Australia in the years after the English settlers introduced them. The biologists might have collected data like those shown in the table. And so we're looking at this data right here. You're going to use this table to find the growth factor. You're also going to have to find the initial population. And then you are going to create an equation using P for population and N for the number of years. And then you're going to use that equation to figure out how many rabbits there were after 10 years, 25 years, and 50 years. How many years, so in what year will we get at least a million rabbits? In problem B, instead of giving you a table, you are given an equation for a different population of rabbits. And you're going to use this equation to find the growth factor and the initial population. And then this is actually a really big idea when it comes to exponential growth. It's the idea of a doubling time. 
So you're going to try to figure out how many years it takes for the population to double. You're going to find out the po how long it will take the population to double um, after three years. And then you're going to see how long it takes for that population to double. What is the population after 10 years? And then figure out how long it'll take for the population of 10 years to double again. And you're going to compare these doubling times. Are there any questions about what you're being 